Welcome everyone to the October Affordable Housing Trust meeting. This evening we have a, a series of important updates and then we'll be uh, joined by Shelley to uh, continue with our strategic plan and uh, we'll, we'll see what other items come up. I do have uh, an email from John Hornick that I'd like to share with, with folks. I just received it today and get to that at the, at the end of the meeting, unless it comes up earlier. So uh, with that, Greg, you want to uh, kick us off on on the updates? Um, sure, yeah. And then I, I'll note we we did um, get some minutes out late. Um, so should we go ahead and just postpone those till November? Well, I I, uh, I, I, I let, let's see if uh, if we have any objection to approving them now. Does anyone have uh, a request to have more time to look at them, or any comments if you had a chance to take a look? Uh, so no, I, I'm not hearing a request to take more time or uh, any comments. And so if that's the case, I think we should go ahead and approve them. Yeah. Okay. So I think it looks like we're all in favor. So uh, thank you. Uh, minutes are approved. Thanks for putting those together, Greg. Uh, it's sure. really very excellent that we're keeping up with them session by session. For my own sanity only. <laughs> okay. Right, Paul, Paul yes. I, I, we really should vote on them, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me go uh, uh, and, and ask uh, uh, Alex, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Erica? Aye. Grover? Aye. Allegra? Aye. Okay. <laughs> uh, Rob? Abstain. I wasn't there. Okay, very good. Carol? Aye. Okay, I vote aye. Uh, so we have uh, uh, I vote in favor. Paul with, oh, sorry, Paul. Yeah, Paul, thank I, you. I, uh, I, I forget to treat you as uh, exactly one of us in this session. Thank um, you. Uh, uh, so minutes are uh, approved. Thank you, everyone. Great. So um, I'll go ahead and switch into some updates here. Um, and Pardon me as I share my screen here, and hopefully you see something that says forum highlights. Um, yes. Can you all see that screen? Yep. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, starting with um, a sort of town updates, um, uh, you know, a few things going on, sort of updates on a, a lot of stuff that you've been hearing about for a while. So the housing production plan uh, continues to be underway. Um, there was, uh, I wrote 10-1 forum here. Um, in fact, it was um, two separate forums that kind of mirrored each other. Um, uh, and uh, we had about 40 folks, uh, thereabouts uh, total um, participated in those. Um, and then uh, coming up, um, we're going to have a, um, uh, really Barrett's going to lead a meeting with some low-income renters that they've done some targeted outreach uh, with um, some folks in uh, managing a couple of Wayfinders properties as well as Village Park. So they're doing outreach to renters um, at those properties to, you know, just get some insights uh, on their experiences. And I'm, I'm grateful that they're doing that targeted outreach. Um, and also uh, probably next week or the following, we'll publish a community survey, um, which will um, mirror some of the input we've already been gathering with the advantage of being you know, digital and portable and, uh, you know, easy uh, for anybody to participate in. Um, so once that's live, please look out for that and, uh, you know, and forward that email on uh, to, um, to you know, everybody in Amherst that you know, um, especially, uh, you know, folks affected by affordable housing issues. Um, I wanted to just sort of plug, pull out real quick and not to go too deep in, but just a few highlight slides from, you um, from those forums, just to get a, give a sense of what uh, of, of what they're doing as they develop the needs assessment, um, you know. And I'm not going to delve into any of these too deeply, but just some examples of some of the slices. And I think I have like four slides here. These are Barrett's, by the way, to, to be clear. Um, and these are a little bit. Big. Greg, I, um, I wonder, can you? Yes, perfect. So now we can see the years. Sorry about that. Um, um, you know, and so you know, in this case, they're looking at um, you know, sort of the. The distribution of um, of ages in households, um, you know, telling some some interesting data, you know, of sort of older households um, becoming a larger uh, 
percentage of, you know, of the, the households in Amherst, um, you know, household sizes, um, you know, there's children some, some, disappearing altogether. In the, um, in yeah, that's, that, 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 that's a recurring theme. That is you know? not bitter yeah. up, but yeah. <laughs> I couldn't show their whole slideshow, but they have, you know, great data on school enrollment and, you know, other stuff related to, um, you know, to uh, children and young people and how that population is getting smaller. Um, household sizes, interesting trends here um, as well. Um, again, more context, uh, you know, will be around all this in the final product of the needs assessment, but just a taste here. Um, you know, uh, some interesting data on unit types in Amherst um, and how we relate to some uh, other communities in the region as far as the splits of what uh, housing typologies we have as far as, um, you know, single family, duplexes, large multifamilies or what. Um, and, you know, this this can tell us some some interesting things in, and potentially, you know, guide some some next steps, you know, in, in forming the, the whole picture. And then the last example here is, you know, the... If I could just ask a question on that one, do you know if the percentages are by buildings or by population we look by units um by units uh, okay um so um uh and uh, and we should we could double check this with barrett but i'm pretty sure uh this is saying 42 percent or 42 and a half percent of the units in amherst are single family detached um and so forth you know townhome um you know you know larger multi um oh sorry this one would be the the uh smaller but um or the duplexes. And then, you know, and this is an interesting number, you know, in probably decade over decade, my guess is this number has, uh, has grown a lot. Uh, I'm, I, I would venture a guess um, from the 2010 to the 2020. Um, although I suppose some of this stuff has come online since 2020. So, um, but yeah, another sort of example of, of what they're talking about, what they're looking at. And then this one is interesting too. It's a, you know, just your basic, um, you know, housing, um, you know, price trends and, you know, looking at both the, the number of sales over here and the dotted line um, and then um, the, you know, the, the price here. And you can see sort of how, you know, as the number of sales go, goes up in a lot of cases, the, there's a, a rough inverse correspondence where the sale prices go down. And when the number of sales go down, especially here, we see the, you know, pretty remarkable, um, you know, increase in, uh, in, in median sales. So, um, and th there's a whole lot more and they had about, you know, probably, you know, 15 or so more interesting slides in uh, their presentation, which is posted by the way, um, uh, you can get there via the housing trust website now. And we've created a, a dedicated page for the uh, housing production plan as well, but that's linked out from the, the housing trust website for your convenience. Um, also in the planning department webpage. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just a quick update on, you know, uh, just a little taste of, of what we were up to on the first, um, what, you know, what, what Barrett was sharing and then following that, um, you know, some, uh, and I don't have pictures from that one, do I? Nope. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was great. So then we also, um, uh, some of you joined us, uh, at the block party in Amherst. Um, uh, and thanks uh, to those of you who were able to join us in table. I had a lot of fun. I hope you all did too. Um, we, we were sort of informally welcoming feedback, both, you know, input into the housing production plan. You can see some of that here, um, as well as, uh, you know, some, some thoughts on the, um, uh, the trust's action plan. I've um, got a few responses from that, but I, for me, it was far more valuable just to have informal conversations with people uh, who just, you know, entered into the conversation on a whim and not very intentionally as we often get folks, you know, offering formal feedback or, you know, proposing a project or something like that. But I had conversations with everybody from, from homeowners who didn't want more housing to uh, renters who were really burdened, you know, had a great conversation with somebody who had just received a voucher and was very excited and very nervous about that. Um, you know, so it was cool just to kind of be out uh, in, in a more human way and in a, you know, more immediate way talking about housing stuff in Amherst. Um, I don't know if anybody else who was at the block party wants to offer any highlights or thoughts. Hmm. Okay, we'll hold off. I don't see anybody. Well, just great, grateful uh, that you put in the work to make it happen, Greg, and everyone who supported that. Awesome. Likewise, yeah, I'm thank you, Greg. That was awesome. Yeah. And well, I yeah, and I was. I think I think the trust had a really good presence, really prominent location. So, and 
always staffed. So all the people volunteered their time was really good. For sure. For sure. I'm, and I'm grateful that Forever was helping turning around the the products for that really quickly. Um, so that's uh, that's really um, promising to me as far as what we can do uh, collaboratively. Um, and then I was going to keep trucking here. Um, uh, on the 25th of September, uh, there was a presentation uh, from the Narrowgate Architects with whom we contracted to do the conceptual uh, work on the VFW site for a future housing resource center, which is the shelter and supportive housing uh, proposal, you know, a concept that we're working with. Um, so they came up with some uh, really excellent product, I thought. Um, the full presentation and, uh, you know, as well as their, you know, their conceptual renderings um, are also on the trust website. Um, you can go uh, check those out. And there's there's also kind of parallel to the, to the the presentation on YouTube, there's also a, a really nice, uh, you know, written narrative, which also includes the images and some of those core concepts. And that's, you know, probably a little bit easier to consume with speed. Um, so um, we're, we're excited to sort of move into the next steps with that. Um, so um, I didn't actually, I maybe I cut that part off, but basically the next steps in the VFW is we'll, um, you know, we'll do some work on, uh, on due diligence, sort of figuring out, you know, the landscape of potential partners in this and, you know, how they're all going to relate to an RFP. And then from that, we'll go into the RFP development process. Um, and precisely when that happens kind of depends on that, that upfront due diligence and, you know, what we and, and, and various parties, you know, kind of need to, to, to do to, to, to make that a, a useful process. Um, the other bits and pieces here. Uh, the Wayfinders project at, uh, that, that we funded uh, at Belchertown Road and, and East Street, um, the, uh, fundamentally, it's still on track. Um, the last time I spoke to you all, we reported that the, uh, the initial ZBA meeting uh, got uh, covered a lot more ground than, than they might have in a, in, a, in a previous approach to a 40B project. Um, informal reports are that it's perhaps slowing down a bit. Nothing is fundamentally off track. There's no major changes the ZBA is proposing. It's just going a little bit slower right now is the update. Um, and we can uh, maybe, uh, you know, we might incorporate that in, in a conversation later on about sort of, you know, partner board engagement or, or, or um, forget the name of our strategy there in our plan. Um, Amherst Community Homes, uh, the, you know, we heard from uh, Jessica today. Uh, marketing is um, is is well underway at this point, um, which is exciting. Um, they're doing uh, a lot of public outreach, a lot of one to one outreach uh, to sort of you know key influencers and gatekeepers. So it's exciting that that's happening. Um, I can share that uh, parallel projects using the same Commonwealth Builder program um, that uh, did not do this upfront outreach are feeling the outcome of that right now. Um, so it seems like their strategy to, to do this well before construction begins is going to bear a lot of fruit. Um, uh, and in another case, uh, a community I'm aware of, um, the developer did not do that upfront outreach and is now scrambling for qualified applicants. So um, it's exciting they, they took that step. Um, and they're going to get started in the spring. There will not be site work this fall. That will begin in the spring. And that's based on uh, state permitting issues, not, not local or anything like that. Um, and then the CPA application, uh, which we talked about some last month, uh, um, was submitted. Uh, and thanks to Gaston and Erica for uh, for helping uh, develop that. And um, we await uh, the CPA's um, uh, response to that and, and stand prepared to answer any questions. I think, yeah, we can come back to this a little bit later. But that is kind of the, the town update piece of things. Yeah, Erica. Um, Questions? I was, I was just going to say, um, Gaston, if you want um, anybody to come with you to the CPA presentation or when they ask questions, I'd be willing sure. to come with you. Sure. Thank you for, for, for that. Yeah, um, it would be, I, given Carol's comments, it would be great to have support. <laughs> and um, yeah, Carol, I'm raising my hand in the wrong way, but um, yeah, even if, I mean, I might. I might come with depending on when it is, but if you could let us know when it is so we can come if we can come, <laughs> that would be great. I mean, we can be attendees and whatever. So thanks. Yeah. Yeah. As we hear back from the CPA, um, you know, I, I maybe Carol, I guess that was around last year. 
I mean, I, I guess I'll, I'll keep the, the trust members updated as to kind of the, you know, the 30,000 foot uh, view of that process. But if there's specifics, um, you know, or if, if there's weeds to delve into, you know, maybe I'll send an invitation for those who, who want to delve into weeds. <laughs> so. Yeah. And if, if, if questions come up that Gaston and Greg, who seem to be mainly putting it together, you'd like the rest of us to just like, send you here's some things that i'm thinking might be useful comments i don't think that if we send them all to you and don't all talk about them i think that's okay so and then you can pick and choose what you want to sure. do so yeah okay all right so maybe since we have a a, a few minutes this might be a good chance for me to uh, read John's email, which is requesting the trust consider uh, joining in, in supporting a, an initiative that he's undertaking. So, yeah, okay, let me pull sure. that up. Uh, okay. Um, I find the email just one sec. Uh, okay. Um, hi, uh, Gaston and Greg. I've been asked by Rebecca Frick to work with her and other members of the Amherst League of Women's Voters in planning an educational event focused on affordable housing. The audience would be league members and the, any other interested persons. The primary goal would be to answer questions like, what is affordable housing? How is it developed and by whom? How is it financed? And how can league members become engaged in advocating for it? Rebecca and I have some ideas about how to proceed with this, but we did want to go ahead, we did not want to go ahead without first consulting you. Joint sponsorship between the league, the housing trust and the town is something we hope you will consider. And so I wanted to uh, put this uh, to the trust, uh, to channel John uh, to the trust and see if this was an initiative that, that we wanted to support this educational event. Allegra, please. I was just gonna say, going back to our strategic plan, it seems to fit in perfectly with the area that I had said I might be interested in helping out with. So I think it would be a great idea. Grover, thank you. I think it would be a great opportunity to share our strategic plan with them and invite them to join any of our working groups. <laughs> All right, great. So it seems like a real natural uh, uh, activity and if anything, something that kind of unlocks the initiatives of the strategic plan. So uh, if if you all agree, I'll, I'll respond accordingly. And um, uh, Erica, please. Just a point of clarification, <clears throat> this is uh, a community forum or this is for the league members? I, well, I think it's uh, hosted by the league. My, um, I've ended up being on the league's mailing list and m my sense is that their events are open um, and, and that they promote them beyond their membership. But that's something I'll, I'll ask to clarify. Uh, from John. Okay. And the email does say any interested people. Yes. No uh, and any other interested persons. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Um, uh, and, uh, yes, Carol. Uh, so I guess maybe when you talk to John and you could just get an idea of what it is that if we're co-sponsoring it, what exactly they would like from us. Yep. So we know quite what we're saying we'll do. I mean, I think it's a great idea, but I'd like to know a little bit more about what is in it involves. And so whatever yeah. you can find out would be appreciated. Okay, by all means. And um, uh, Allegra, uh, given your kind of issue spotting this as, as the area that you uh, indicated interest in, in, in pushing on, uh, may I copy you on that uh, reply? Yeah, good, excellent.
Does anyone have anything else that you've seen in the news or any other ideas that, that you want to put forward for consideration? Um, I guess, Greg, one, one item that we've been trying to slot in is the opportunity to go and check out the uh, uh, ADU that's being constructed at UMass campus before it makes its way down to Holyoke. Oh, is there like a prefab one or something that's being constructed and it's going to move after construction? Correct, yeah. So professor yeah. at UMass uh, is building this with students and it's in a partnership with the, the city of Holyoke, as I understand it. And uh, we would uh, maybe uh, Greg, you can you can uh, uh, identify the professor. And the other thought was that he could come to us and talk to us about his study, which is actually analyzing uh, the the town of Amherst to see what is the possible what is the potential density increase that could be achieved through ADUs. Cool. Um, yeah. So his his name is Rob Williams, um, and he's a architect, um, an architecture professor, but. Uh, what I think is cool is the studio that um, is building is a collaboration between the School of Architecture and the School of Building Sciences, or Building Science, I guess. And they are, um, uh, so it's kind of a hands-on, uh, you know, sort of workshop scenario where they're actually building um, these small accessory dwellings that have been, um, there's a few already down in Holyoke. Uh, they're working with the CDC down there. Um, uh, and, uh, but, but they're building them, uh, at a location on campus and, um, I mean, yeah, and I think he's open to visits. Um, so we have to schedule that with him, but, um, I, I think he'd be more than happy to show us around. I um, mean, and as Gaston said, he'd also, you know, we've also invited him to join us to share some of his data work, which is, as you know, looking at, uh, capacity for ADUs, uh, in, uh, in Amherst. Um, and the question, you know, there's probably in the, mathematical sense that may have changed to some degree based on recent legislation. And so it's a question of whether his, uh, he, I think he said his, you know, he thought his data could be adjusted relatively easily to reflect that. But, um, but in any case, so it's, you know, it's a, uh, um, I, I've seen some very basic snapshots of it, but um, it's, it's interesting stuff. And I know as well, there have been, I, and I've kind of, I think since Gaston and I met with him, I heard maybe from him or Dave, I forget, but very informally, you know, him and Dave, I think had a, informal conversation as well about, you know, potentially doing, uh, finding a way to do something in Amherst, uh, in the future. Um, that's probably a few years away because they have a queue, uh, um, as I understand it, but, um, uh, but you know, maybe a neat thing to do a demonstration project or, uh, a way to, um, sort of, you know, both, you know, highlight that typology and also find ways to collaborate, uh, at the, at the sort of ground level with stakeholders at UMass, which I think is a healthy thing too, so. Carol. Um, I just wanted to, another thing to think about. I signed up to go to a, um, what's it called? Community, Covenant Homes, Community Homes uh, workshop. And then I couldn't end up going to it, but I got this incredible bunch of materials that I would be happy to share, which includes a model bylaw for a, that a town could adapt in order to allow this, which is like kind of a cluster of ADUs is what it looks like to me, just as a quick, as a quick take from looking at what they're, what they're talking about. And it just seems like an, another interesting, innovative kind of thing that I, I missed the presentation, but I, I got all the materials. So I'd be happy to share them if people are interested. Great, and I, that can join the um, resources that, that Greg's been compiling and can, can send back out to us. Um, Erica. I was just curious, um, because this is an assumption, uh, in terms of Holy probably having all sewer lines, whereas in Amherst we also have septic systems, so it'd be good to have information that would include what it means uh, ADU with septic. Nice. Alex. Um, yeah, if you're reaching out to the design build program at UMass, um, in addition to the professor that you mentioned, you should also reach out to Professor Carl Fiocchi and Benjamin Leinfelder, who's a grad student who's been coordinating a lot of the design build program. 
but specifically to your question, Erica, with septic and some of the more utilities heavy side, they're probably going to be a better source of that information. Uh, since we have an, another minute or two, uh, I guess I'm curious if we can take an informal poll of interest to actually go in person to the UMass campus to see this this unit. So yeah, Erica, you're interested. This semester for me, um, Tuesdays are the easiest day. Is that a day that can potentially work for folks? It's, uh, like a Tuesday, like what would be the window of time that that could work if any time works? For me, it's later in the afternoon. My team staff meeting goes till about two on Tuesday. Okay. So like after, let's say after, after two thirty or three, and before before when is is the sweet spot. Depends on what my kids' activities are. So okay. but before five thirty. Okay. Um, uh, would it may be aiming for like a four thirty p.m. on a Tuesday potentially work for people? Okay. Uh, well, Greg, sorry. Yeah, I, you, I've got to ask you, Greg. Um, um, if we did it um before Thanksgiving, um, yes, that would work. Um, uh, after less so. Okay, well, let, let, I, I think it's going to disappear uh, at some point, maybe this calendar year. So um, why don't we reach out and see if, if John can accommodate us um, in one of the next, uh, you know, two or three Tuesdays. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, Paul. And Greg, you'll notify everybody whenever it gets scheduled so people can plug For in sure. if they want. Yeah. Sorry, I'm making sure I. Yeah, so I'll, yeah, once that gets gets on the calendar, I'll I'll send an invite out to folks and um, make everybody aware. Um, and expecting to see Shelly soon, but. Sure. But yeah. Is there other, as far as the ADU piece, is there other stuff we should talk about? I think we've got a target time. That's good. Erica. Uh, just a, a quick question, maybe for a future presentation. <clears throat> I know ARPA is starting to eventually uh, wrap up. But I'm wondering if the town could tell us, um, I know that there was um, the uh, possibility of individuals who uh, had major negative impacts in terms of housing that they could apply for opera funds. Um, and I tried to look on the website in terms of eligibility. I couldn't find it. I just saw a report about it. Um, I wonder if we can have an update in the future for that. Okay. I'm um, sure. Yeah, I think we can we can try and track down some data on that. Um, okay. And I have Shelly here. I'm going to go ahead and promote her if I could. So here comes Shelly. Got her. There she is. Hey, Shelly. Hi. Hi. So we kind of burned through our other items, but uh, but I think we're, we're ready to to jump into um, action plan stuff. I will say that I do have, I, I did send out a little bit of feedback, um, which I also have in some slides because uh, it went out a little bit late. Um, so that's kind of one extra piece I can share relatively briefly um, at some point here. Okay. So I mean, should I just go ahead and do that now? Does that make sense? Do you want to share? Do you want to share the um, implementation proposal? Sure. Yeah. I guess the the one uh, sort of in in advance of that, that we, we we did a little bit of we did a, like a a basic survey of, of folks of the public's feedback on the plan. Oh, got it. Yeah. Um, uh, and I just wanted to you know in, in a timely way just kind of go through that real quick if, if I could. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, um, yes. All right. Um, 
so we did get um, uh, a limited number of uh, a feedback, and I'll I'll go through quickly here. Um, so these are all strategies you're all familiar with, but we asked uh, we we invited folks to weigh in on the strategies that excited them most, um, and these are the the answers we ended up with. Um, Based on you know we, we listed our strategies and, and these are the ones that, that folks highlighted with the you know, the land donation uh, from an ed institution and the the development ecosystem um, strengthening that uh, coming up a couple of times um, a couple other things here but these are all um, you know town on parcels home ownership um, sort of creative funding ideas you know all, all stuff you're familiar with from the existing plan um, and then what's missing. Um, some thoughts, you know, some encouragement to uh, push colleges more more actively and universities, uh, a couple of different thoughts there. Um, and then also looking at existing housing and how to reduce costs in, in what we have now, whether it's through rent subsidies or, uh, you know, or energy efficiency ideas, that sort of thing. I think the most useful thing uh, that we got back um, uh, among the responses we did get was really about grammar and we can um maybe come back to this a little bit later but um these aren't basically you know cool i think this was good feedback in that somebody read it as you know as what we he added here um you know at least you know where we just had developed 200 affordable homes so you know, not putting caps on things um, and, and do that with a few different things. And I think that's um, ultimately a communications thing. Um, uh, I think 200, we're all agreed is a, a robust goal, but I think how we communicate and how we frame some of these numbers um, probably matters as well. So I thought this was helpful feedback. Um, but I just wanted to make sure I got that in there before we jumped right in. So. Um, I can, so is the group know, prepared to formally vote to accept those tonight or are you wanting to do more feedback? I'm trying to remember. My, my sense is that we're we're ready, uh, but let's let's have any comment on that um, you know in in favor or or uh, against doing so if there is any. Or like, do you want to consider that language of at least versus how we have it now written where it's um, more finite? Or do you want to just stick with what you have? Okay, could you put that language back up, uh, Greg, and, and let's get some reactions to the, the at least. And um, I guess I, I feel I, I have maybe some mixed feelings about it, but let's let's see how how we feel about that so that we can, um, you know, strike the hammer while the iron is hot uh, tonight. So what you have right now is support the creation of 200 homes. And this person is saying. It'd be like support the creation of at yeah. least 200 homes. If I can jump in, if we want to make such a an adjustment to address the concern that was raised by this uh, resident, I would suggest that we have switch from at least to or more um, a, as a different way of saying the same thing that is pie, pie enhancing rather than using the word least in there. That's my own reaction. I, I uh, don't feel strongly about it, but if we want to make a qualification, that would be my um, suggestion. So do folks feel uh, that this is a feedback that, that makes sense to take in Alex? Yeah, I would support adjusting the language to either the, the at least or 200 or more, with the exception of the proposal here to change the land donation, to say seek at least one land donation, I would rather see that left general as seek a land donation, um, partially because I think that a donation doesn't at, imply a, a limit on that and a, a donation could have multiple parts. But also I don't want that to be seen as us viewing this as kind of an eternal seeking of land from the educational partners, which I would worry about. Thank you, Alex. Paul, please. Yeah, I, I don't, I 
I mean, if, if we're going to change it, I agree with your language, um, Gaston, and agreed with what Alex said. I, I sort of feel like when you're setting goals, you sort of set a target. And it's what mm -hmm. this is, is a target. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's there's nobody that would say, oh, we've got 200 affordable homes. We can't build any more. I don't think anybody would mm -hmm. see it, read it that way. I just think it's sort of a, you know, but if, if we feel like we want to accept a change from someone took the time to read it, um, I don't really feel it. I think I don't think it's a big difference, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Grover. Yeah, similarly to Paul, I appreciate the vibe this person is bringing, and um, and I'd support Gaston your language proposal change. I'm all for, as you know, being quite ambitious about our numbers, and I think these are ambitious numbers, and they're goals for a reason. Like Shelley was pretty clear about setting clear yeah. goals, and so we were doing that. So we're not going to turn anyone away because yeah their proposal puts us up to 220 affordable homes, right? Like, so, um, so I, yeah. I personally, I, I like if that person is listening, I love the vibe. And also I think voting on it and then moving on to next steps at the next meeting is in, in better service of this goal than amending the language, coming back, putting it on the agenda again and voting on it. Yeah. Thank you, Grover. So yeah, I'm I'm not hearing anyone. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm glad that we're we're processing some feedback, and and that it, it we're kind of rebuilding our resolve for the outcome that we've arrived at after many months of work with Shelley. So uh, un unless anyone wants to make the case to uh, make a change to the draft as it is, I uh, I suggest we we continue with the the the, the plan that that was before us this evening. So, uh, and anyone want to jump in and and advocate for uh, a language change here? Okay, hear, hearing hearing no. Uh, I see no Carol is saying this up. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I, yeah. You've got the yellow wall, which makes it tricky. Oh, Go ahead, Carol. Sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm I'll have to change my wall color or my hand color. <laughs> anyway, I'm not. I so you're saying do not make any changes in our document based on this that's what you're just suggesting correct i i thought that uh, i heard people saying go ahead and change it only i like your words better develop 200 or more i like or more some more or more feels less something or other i just like it better and um i don't know i did i don't know Oh, so, so, so are you I just, suggesting I'm just that? Trying to, I'm just trying to understand. Yeah. I thought the way the conversation go, was going yeah. seemed to be saying change it. And then Gaston said, we're agreeing to not change it. I want to let, know let me let me review. Let, thank you, Carol. Let me let me review what I what I heard. And, and then folks can 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 correct me. Um, I I heard uh, I didn't hear anyone advocating for making this change. I heard Alex saying if we're going to make a change, Let's not make a change to the land donation. I heard Paul saying uh, doesn't seem, you know, the kind of syntax that you need with goals. But if we are going to make a change, then the or more. And I heard Grover saying uh, these are ambitious goals. And the reasonable reading of them is that, of course, we want to keep going. And so based on that, uh, what I... Uh, how I interpreted folks' comments. That's why I summarized um, the, the 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 space that we were at, Carol Grover. Please. Well, Carol, what I I think the most um, relevant piece of what I was saying was that I didn't. I would rather we voted on it now and move forward with our next steps at the next meeting than putting it off another meeting to vote on Absolutely. it because we have to go edit the language. So that's why I was supporting voting on it as is versus the edit, which I like the sound of, but doesn't seem ne needed as much as moving on to the next action it does. Alex? You, sorry. Just as a point of order, would we be able to propose vote on an amendment and vote on the revised language in this meeting? Would would that not oh, yeah. be within our procedure? I I don't I don't see why not. Does anyone see a reason why we couldn't uh, vote to approve the uh, the strategy with a tweak that we uh, make this evening? 
Okay, so does anyone want to make the case for a tweak to the language this evening? And so, yes, I mean, Grover, and now I'm hearing you being uh, actually that in, in a perfect world, you would want to make a, a modification. And so may, uh, may, maybe you could offer the, the sure. tweak that you would like to see if we, if we could make I, one and approve tonight. I will, I'm going to propose an amendment to this as written, which is to change develop 200 or 200 or more affordable homes develop two parcels or more for affordable housing development seek not changing that one supporting the creation of 20 or more homes for home ownership so that okay, would be any, increasing okay. our production items with that language for those three items. So the only thing I want to point out is that this person actually is really changing. They're not just changing those words. They're actually changing the structure of the sentence too. So um, it, this is what makes it a little bit confusing to do this actually on the spot because they're they're really modifying the, the phraseology. So um, the way you have it currently is support the creation of 200 homes for rent or ownership affordable to people earning below 100% AMI over the next five years. So, um, I don't know if it's. I think we can be, just do the, the the or more right after the two hundred. Right. If so we, I if, think if, if you propose to just add in or more on that one, makes it less complicated tonight. Yeah. And then, which one? Can you repeat the other ones? And I'll just say if if the language is too mod is modified. Which did you say? Develop at least two parcels, or did you say keep it as? Just two parcels. Two, it would be two or more parcels. Okay, so the way that you have it now is identify two parcels in collaboration with the town to use for affordable housing development. So are you proposing identify at least two parcels? Two well, we are trying to get away from the lease. So identify two or more parcels. Two or more parcels, mm -hmm. okay. And in then, collaboration with the town, yep. To use for affordable housing development. And then yep. support the creation of 20 or more homes. And then we would have to change it to say for home ownership. 20 I think or more be... homes for ownership. For Yeah, you could still say ownership. Homes for ownership. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Grover. So I think we have a, an amended version on the table. Can we have any kind of comments in, in support or or uh, against that amendment to the the draft that we started the evening with? As a as a point of order, I think we would need a second for an amendment, which I'm happy to provide. But okay and the uh yes so the the, the um to get the amendment on the table we'd need a second and so uh, alex you provide the second and so now we can go to comment on this amendment i'm in support of the amendment i don't think it changes very much and it incorporates the feedback we've gotten. Um, it was great that someone um, stepped up and gave feedback. So I think it still supports our goals. I don't think it changes them. Okay. And anyone else want to uh, chime in and support or, or uh, against the amendment? Okay. So um, then, you know, I, I'm. Uh, rusty with my Roberts here, but our uh, the next step would be to um, have a vote on the amendment. Okay, um, so let's have a vote on the amendment. Um, uh, Grover? Aye, okay, uh, for, for you. Uh, Allegra? Yes. Okay, um, Erica? Yes. Carol? Yes. Alex? Yes. Rob? Yes. Paul? Yes. 
and I uh, vote in support as well. So the amendment has passed and we've got a, uh, a new draft on the table. And so um, shall we proceed right away to uh, vote on the uh, amended version of the, the strategy? Shelly, is that, or do you want to cover anything else first? No, I'm, I'm. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead. Uh, can we have a motion to, uh, do we need a motion to uh, 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 approve the strategy as amended? So moved. Okay, second. A second. Okay, uh, thank you. And so uh, let's go ahead and, and, and have a vote here. Uh, Paul. Yes. Rob. Yes. Alex. Yes. Carol. Yes. Erica. Yes. Allegra. Yes. Grover. Yes. And I vote yes. So the uh, strategy after uh, so much effort and support from Shelly has passed. So a uh, big, big accomplishment. Thank you so much, uh, Shelly, for guiding us through this. Thanks, team. Yay. So there's one more thing we want to talk about tonight. Um, Greg, do you want to share the document on your screen or, or yep. Uh, okay, great. So we wanted to talk about how you're gonna now move forward with trying to accomplish your, working on accomplishing your goals and strategies. So um, kind of an implementation plan and wanted to talk this through a little bit with you and get some feedback. So this is something that the small group has reviewed. Um, so one is, the key thing is to develop three working groups that trustees and staff will lead, one for each goal. And at a, a couple meetings ago, some of you had identified kind of some of the strategies that you're really interested in. And you can see that development is a popular one. Um, but the hope is that you would be willing to divide up a little bit to have a couple of you on a development sub um, working group, a couple on funding and a couple on education and public engagement. Hopefully it'll work out that way. And then Greg as staff would support the work of all three working groups. So that's kind of some very general structure. And then uh, looking at the working groups, that the idea is that the working group would review the goals and strategies developed for the topic and develop a plan for moving forward. So in this smaller group, um, consider a feasible path to implement the strategies, consider uh, the sequence of addressing strategies, developing tasks, and kind of delegating who you think the best person to accomplish tasks would be, identifying any necessary resources, um, um, and then some thought about how it ties into the housing production plan just to help with that conversation as you're starting that planning process. And the idea is that each working group would come back ideally as soon as December, your December meeting to present this, um, your idea of a path to move forward, considering these different issues of the sequence of addressing strategies, developing tasks, so that each of the working groups would come in December and present to the full board because the working groups are yeah. helping to do the work, but it's really the full board's responsibility to vote on and to agree to kind of the path forward at the December meeting, the full board, all trustees would be able to ask questions, offer some suggestions. The board may decide to accept the proposed plan in December or um, ask the working group to make some changes and come back in January with then the idea that implementation would start in 2025. So take a couple months to think through how to move forward and the, the order and the sequence and then in 2025 to really kick off the work. So the working groups will help do the work, but um, allowing the full board to make the decisions on implementation direction. And then once the board has agreed on a plan, the working groups will begin to implement the strategies and working groups will come back periodically to the full board when further discussion is necessary. 
um, to progress with the plans. So we had thought that no working group will represent a quorum for the full trust board. And this was, the idea was um, around open meeting law, but I was reading through some, some um, comments uh, um, from a session that we had with the AG's office, attorney general's office in the spring on open meeting. And what she did say is that like even if we call it a working group, if the idea is that it's a subgroup of the full group and the idea is to do work and to advise the full board that it probably is a subcommittee where it would need to post publicly. So um, it, it maybe technically wouldn't matter if they're, we'll have to think through that a little bit, but it, it might need to be formally posted like a subcommittee, even if we call it a working group. Um, but the idea was to kind of have you spread out over the, you, Paul, do you want to, you want to give some insight into that? Yeah. So whatever, it doesn't matter if you call it a working group task force, yeah. uh, whether it's, it's a subcommittee. And okay. if it's two or more members who are assigned by this committee to do something, it's as if it were our committee doing it, even if it's recommendation back. So they do, they, they would have to be posted. If you had one member of our group with members of the public, that's different, but um, but if you have two or more of our members, they should be posted. And, and it's a simple thing to post, but it's also yeah. being taken some minutes and stuff like that. So. And the agenda and so forth. Okay, so then I think the 3C is, we don't necessarily need to have that, but the idea is hopefully that you'll be spread out over the, the subcommittees so that the work is, is spread out. And then one thing that the small group would like to propose or present and get your feedback on is um, allowing for non-trust members to sit on the working group that interested candidates can be approved by the full board, but to allow that. And it's not like people are going to be necessarily knocking down your doors to do that. But if they're in your conversations in um, some feedback that you did receive, if you have any names tied to that, that there, you might have some people in the community that would that don't necessarily want to sit on the full board and the commitment of the full board, but being on a subcommittee working more targeted on different strategies, that that might be appealing to some people. So we would like to propose that that be allowed. So just a basic kind of structure to help you move forward and wanting to have some discussion tonight about this. So any thoughts or feedback or Anything to add? Carol, please. Um, two things. I wonder if if December's too quick. <laughs> and that's one thing I wonder, but it's not <laughs> it's okay to shoot for it if we if it's okay if we don't quite maybe make it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is I like the idea of inviting non-trust members, but I think maybe it needs a little bit of formulation more because maybe if you have a, a committee of us that has two people you probably don't want six non board members or and i don't know exactly how we decide who who is going to participate and who isn't and so that part just feels like it leaves it a little, needs a little more fleshing out leaving it there as an idea is okay but it doesn't seem well enough defined to me would you want to propose um, like that, that non trust members don't sur I don't know the language, but like don't surpass the, the number of trust members on a subcommittee on a working group. That's a possibility. I don't listen to what some other people want to say first. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Thank you uh, for getting the conversation going, uh, Carol. Alex. Yeah, I largely agree with Carol that I like the idea of having input from people who aren't necessarily an appointed member of the trust. Um, I agree that that requires a little more flushing out, maybe more so than just thinking about numbers as well, thinking about what our goal is and who, like whose voices we're trying to hear in that process. Because if the thought is that we're looking for people who are interested, but might not have the time commitment to apply and be appointed to the trust, but then we're asking them to essentially apply to us and be appointed to the working group through a, a kind of parallel process. I wonder if that's actually going to be appealing to people or if we need to look at making that a more flexible process. So I, I agree that I really like the goal and I would love to hear voices from people not on the trust 
but I think it probably needs some more development and what that looks like. Rob, thank you, Alex. Oh, you're muted still. Um, I I also agree with Alex that that it, it should be an informal uh, process to get them on onto a, a subcommittee. And I also I, I don't think that there needs to be a limit. I, I I'm fine with having two trust members and ten members of the public. The more the merrier. Did you say that it should be a more informal process? Yep. That be yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Grover. I have some curiosities about what is meant by somebody being a formal member of a working group when we're talking about these processes. While the meeting is already an open meeting, the public is available to come, and usually there's a time for in any agenda of Robert's rules for things not already discussed in the agenda. So I say that because, and I think we brought it up, I brought it up last time we talked, like when we join the trust, we take an oath to like be part of the town sort of decision making and it comes with the, all these ethical things. So it just makes me wonder like what the responsibilities and benefits of being like a like formal member of the working group versus if we're just having open meetings uh, that is a working group and anyone can come and they can provide input to me that's enough um and i just say that because i i yeah because we haven't outlined what a member of the working group like what does that mean like are they then dep like deputized to go say talk to umass on behalf of the trust and if they are what you know there's a screening process for being on the board so I, I could imagine that if you were a strategic developer landlord somebody with an axe to grind in a certain way that might not be apparent like you might find this process useful to be in so not to be like paranoid but also i i, I would want us if we're creating some kind of an extra formal role besides appointed trust member and public who can participate in the meetings, what that in-between role does and serves and how they're accountable. Thank you, uh, Grover. Um, uh, Carol, go ahead and then I have some, some thoughts here too. All this discussion is making me realize that one of the things I would like to achieve with being able to have people who aren't members be part of the working groups is to have us all in the room if we could have a meeting that was a working group and not have attendees and web people or have everybody in the room, so it's not like this weird, the people who are there don't even know who else is there. I hate the way that these things work like that. If we could do something, so we, in, if, you're, if you're here, we're inviting everybody into the room, even though we still know who the people are that are there, that would help a lot to me to be able to make have all, the trust members would still be the subcommittee or working group members, but anybody else who was interested in being there could just be in the room. Thank you. Uh, Paul, please. Yeah, so I think, I understand that, Carol. So I think that it's, think about a meeting as being in a in the town room, right? Or any room. So if people are at the table and then some people are in the audience, that's that's the way we're doing it now. But if you say, hey, people come up and join us at the table, and everybody comes up and you let everybody come up and join you at the table, that's perfectly fine. So you can open up this meeting and bring everybody into the room, but you can't say I'm picking this these three people to come into the room who aren't on the committee. If you open it up, you open it to everybody because you can't say I'm excluding you because I just don't like your opinion. So if we're, if we're in the town room and we have a big enough table, you say, hey, everybody just come up to the table. It's more human to talk to each other that way versus so we're having a different so it's just one or the other you can it does it's you can do both it's just one or the other can you do different ones in different meetings sure okay so i'll i'll, I'll jump in now i mean I, i've shared my view before that i think we'll be lucky to have anyone want to make any kind of cons consistent commitment and so i'm i i'm very sympathetic to rob's comment we should you know let's just be open here um i guess the 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 Kind of hybrid approach that that occurs to me is that if there's someone who wants to make a repeated commitment to one of these subgroups and it's important for them to have a formal 
involvement that they could put on a CV or something like that, then the group could say so-and-so is really devoted to what we're doing and they would like to be a formal member of this working group and then the trust can vote to make them such. It, it seems to me that we can, uh, on an ad hoc basis, formalize anyone's commitment who, who so desires and is, is, is devoted in that way. But otherwise, the kind of open forum um, uh, seems to me to, to be you know, workable. Um, Alex. Yeah, just as a point of clarity in the situation that you mentioned, where somebody is consistently making contributions to a working group and looking for more formal involvement, at this moment, we still have a vacancy on the trust for a full trust member, do we not? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I, I thought so. So is that in that scenario, if we're thinking that this isn't going to have a bunch of people breaking down the door to get in, then would it maybe be more appropriate at that moment to just encourage them to actually fill out a community activity form and go through the formal process and become a member of the trust? No, 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 no doubt. I mean, if we're trying to kind of spell out all the possibilities, maybe someone has a very narrow interest. They, they, they are really interested in the public education piece. That's what they want to do. They don't want to show up to these monthly meetings. They want to just uh, join Allegra's efforts on the public um, education and engagement. And so, again, I don't have any problem with someone saying, this is my thing. Can you make it formal so I can tell people I do this instead of just being someone who shows up every now and then? Again, we'll be lucky to have this person. Um, that's that's, I guess, my take here, um, that we can kind of do all of this without any issue. Um, uh, so I, I wonder if, if that uh, appears copacetic to you all. Carol. Um, it does still leave me with some of the worries, that kinds of worries that Grover brought up before. I don't know what this in between, I don't know what we would be telling them if we told them they were somehow officially or unofficially official or something. But I don't think there's any reason why somebody on a, is working with us can't do some work and do what it is that the, that the subcommittee agrees. Somebody can say, if somebody's really into the public education piece, they can do that. I don't know if they want to, if they want, nothing stops them from saying, I worked with the blah, blah, blah to do blah, blah, blah. They don't, I don't think they need us to put a, give them a gold stamp on their forehead because they did it or something. I just think if somebody comes okay. up and wants to do it, they'll do it. And we don't have to do anything about it except be very grateful. If I may, then the kind of hybrid, hybrid approach is let's just kick the can. And if a person comes up that would be a, that individual who may would make sense to, uh, in some sense, formalize as a member of a working group, this full trust can talk about it and decide what we want to do when we're so lucky. Yes, I like that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, does that good. seem like a reasonable way forward? Yeah. The only uh, thing I'm just going to say is that I've been in groups where it's like a neighborhood association and someone comes and they drop a bunch of bombs of like the stuff that are important to them and the stuff they want to talk about. And then they don't, and it's disruptive. And then we put on the agenda for the next month and they don't, they don't show up for three months. So that's all that I would caution them about is that these working groups really need to be helping to move things forward. And if you have a really open loose where someone can come and then not come and you just don't want it to detract the group, distract the group and to slow things down. And so that was kind of the thinking behind inviting them to be a member of the working group where there's accountability and where they have some sense that they have made a commitment and that they won't be in and out where it could be it could be disruptive for the group. Okay, Grover. That's helpful context. And I hear that. But I think because they have to be open meeting anyway, it just seems like if somebody's going to come and drop distracting things, they will do it anyway. <laughs> Is but you don't thinking... have to. You don't have to allow that kind of comment at public meetings. You do have to let people be there and to hear, but you don't have to provide space necessarily. Right. I see. 
So I, again, like to, yeah. to other yeah. people's comments, yeah. like it's unlikely that you'll have, you'll, it's probably unlikely that you'll have that problem, but it's just, I think something to keep in mind. And, and, and we're learning here. So, you know, every single month we can course correct if, if anyone's having issues, Greg, please. Yeah, I just sort of echoing Grover a little bit. I, I think um, we came into this, maybe at least in our last discussion, as a small group, we were kind of still thinking in this framework of working groups. But I think where we are now is talking about subcommittees and open meeting. And, and so, yeah, I think um, the art really is going to be in the trust members who are actually the the chairing these meetings, so to speak, in, you know, in, in doing that. You know, if, if somebody says, oh, I want to spread the word about this, you know, event, like, you know, then the trust person has to make sure they provide the materials to that, to that, th that person, for example. Um, but I think, yeah, if, if it's open meeting, then I, I, I think there, like, you know, there's sort of an element of, of good faith, you know, and, and it's gotta be um, a, a little, a little more organic and a little less, a little less formal in a way on the participatory side, um, you know, so I, I don't know that there's a, there, there's a channel for formalization. So I, I think the, probably the thing to, to do is to kick the can like Gaston said and if that really isn't you know is something we have to address in a concrete scenario we address it as a group Carol I like the idea of worrying about it if it comes up but I have a question I'd like to ask Paul because there are I believe like the finance committee or there are committees that have people on the committee who aren't members of the council or something like that i just wonder if you could say anything about how that works that might be relevant or not re anyway i'm curious so the charter allows for non-resident or resident non-members of the council to serve on the finance committee it's, in, it's written into the town charter there are some committees that have um uh, like uh, adjunct members um i think like the public art commission cultural council something like that has that written into their charge as well. You can have um, members who may not vote, but are sort of members in waiting and as, as if it were, as it were. Thank you. So would you like the small group to do a little bit more fleshing out of some language with, with that particular piece? Um, but are there thoughts about the other elements of the implementation plan? Any other, I suggestions to modify implementation? Alex. Yeah, I I like the um, implementation plan that we saw with the, outside of what we've been saying about the small group. It does occur to me that one of the group's focuses is proposed to include public engagement. And what we're discussing does seem to really be a public engagement strategy. So I wonder if we're interested in starting to set up these small groups and have them meeting as subcommittees and get used to that, if maybe that's something that we could refer out to the Education and Public Engagement Subcommittee to come back to us at their first proposal with thoughts on how to structure this to involve public engagement and input. So, Shelley, are you you looking? Uh, sh sh should we be planning to vote on approving something about this this evening? I'm not sure that you're ready to do that. Okay, all right. So I was trying to get some more feedback about what the small group should consider when we meet next. Okay, Grover. I'm just gonna say that I uh, I I like this plan. I think it's. It has a lot of good stuff in it, and I appreciate how, you know, it's it's laying it all out about, about where to go next. And I also see that four of us excited about development, but only one on each of the other subcommittees does pose to be a challenge. So I think it would be in our best interest to resolve some of that tonight. Good. Yes, um, indeed. And and I'm 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 flexible here. Uh, but uh, Erica, please go ahead. 
Um, I have no problems being, um, you know, alone on the funding uh, subcommittee. Um, what I think probably the smaller group uh, might want to consider is what's the role of the trust member? Because what we have to do is be sort of like Gusto, mini chairs of our groups. Um, and I think we also have to really understand the limitation of the group. For example, I think we agreed that if the group uh, was going to make a decision about something, it has to be brought back to the trust, uh, especially if it implicates the trust. For example, there was an example made that um, you know, one of the members are going to talk to UMass. Well, I think that is something that has to be brought back to the whole trust before something like that could happen. So I think we need to flesh out a little bit about what the leader of the subgroup, uh, a trust member, uh, will be responsible for and, and think through. Um, and I think we could do that in this subgroup. But I have no problems being the only one on the, on the funding one. Alex. Um, yeah, I was going to offer as much as I am interested in and love development, I'd be happy to change my interests to be um, education and public engagement as needed. Thank you. Uh, Grover. I just had a clarifying question. Maybe it's to Shelly, um, which is, what do these tiny letters next to our names mean? <laughs> Those are the strategies that you specifically identified as an interest in. So it's under um, funding, Erica specifically said B and D, the B and D strategies were interesting to her. So that's just what it means. We just made a note of it in, our, in the minutes, yeah. Um, I wasn't present, so I, I didn't choose a, a subcommittee. I'm, I'm happy to join Erica. Erica, fantastic. <laughs> because I wasn't okay with Erica being the only one doing funding. Not that my not that my opinion matters, but okay. So um, then that evens you out a little bit better, actually quite good. And we were thinking with Paul because of Paul's not wanting to speak for him, but because of your role in the community, that it probably makes sense for you to be more of support of the different subgroups, but the working groups, but not to actually be on one. Is that the right? Okay, yeah. So that's why um, we weren't pushing you to pick one. Okay, so we'll even out these groups. So it looks like with development, Grover and Caroline Gaston will drive the those funding, Erica and um, Rob, and then education and, and public engagement, Allegra and Alex. And then the small group will do a little bit more work on flushing out kind of non-trust members and what that might look like. Someone else also brought up, it might've been Greg of chairing the working groups. And I think we should put in here just that uh, the expectation is that a trust member will chair the, the working group. That's not clarified here. And maybe add a little bit more detail to come back to your next meeting. And so that does mean that we won't expect a December turnaround. <laughs> so we'll push that back a little bit too. Okay, I think that's helpful. Does anyone else have, not to take your job, Gaston, but does anyone else have any other input to, to add to this? Or does the subgroup, the subcommittee need any more feedback? Greg? I was wondering if, if folks, if there is interest between now and, and November, say, in, in folks gathering I'm just trying to think process-wise what would, would be needed in order to enable that. Um, like, would we need to empower them now to do that? Um, I don't know, Paul, if you have a thought on that. <laughs> or, you know, like, like, do, like, do we have to vote on these committees, on, the, on these subcommittees? Or... Mm. Yeah, I I, th I think if the committee is delegating L work, it sh this body should say yes. This is the things that we are delegating out. Okay, uh, Carol. Yeah, let's let's. I th I thought we just decided that we needed to have a little more structure for the groups before they met. Like that, they should have uh, a chair, and there should be more about. So it feels weird to have to meet before we know quite what we're supposed to be. To me, I know it so, takes so another we... month, but well, I, well, I I guess I I don't think there's much more 
structure that's needed. If we agree that each of these should have a chair, then if there's going to be a meeting called, uh, the uh, group would need to tell Greg, please post so that we can have a public meeting. And by the time that meeting starts, someone better be the chair. I, I, is, is there any structure that I'm missing here? Uh, Grover. I was imagining that we would vote for the chair at the first subcommittee meeting just because, I don't know, I just feel like we're in a concentric circle of democracy that just keeps going and you just <laughs> repeat the format as you go. <laughs> That's how I imagined it. Is that correct? <laughs> Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, that 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 makes sense to me. Um, I, I I mean, voting and agreeing when we're talking about two people is basically the same thing, Erica. Um, so uh, if we're going to meet, how are we going to recruit people? Um, uh, so I would just propose that our next minutes uh, that we maybe contact either Greg or contact Rob and I both. I don't know, uh, because, you know, people are going to want to ask us, well, when are we going to meet? And, you know, what is what, are, what is it we're going to do? So um, I assume that we want to start recruiting if we're meeting pretty quickly. If we're waiting a little while, we can think a little further about how we're going to recruit people. But if we're expected to start those meetings really quickly, um, I, I would like to think about a recruitment strategy. Uh Good. And I guess my reaction is that each of these groups can decide if they want to actually try to recruit other people or just post it. And if someone shows up, they show up. And if they don't, they just get to work. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the anti-structure structuralist here. Um, does that does this work? Are we are we missing anything or can oh, we uh vote to approve these working groups? Not to say that they have to meet, but that they could. And I think Greg's suggestion was a very good one. Uh, let's do what we need in case the the will exists uh, to to go ahead and and, and crack into things. Um, so, um, are the you know any yeah Grover please. Just have a technical question, which is okay, but yes, I I agree with moving forward as you're proposing. And Greg, I know there's like 48 hour noticing. How what is your time that you need for us to send you information so that you have enough time to post it in time? Um, I, I need about, um, I mean, so these days I'm largely working Monday through Thursday. Um, so, you know, so like, and we need 48 hours, you know, so if you give me, you know, uh, 24 hours, it would be generous, I think, you know, so 72 hours before you um, seek to meet, I guess, you know, uh, would, would be the. Okay. Before the but, 48 but, hours, right? <laughs> no, 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 it's, no, no, so, so 24 before the 48. Okay. Basically by Thursday for the following week or by Monday for Thursday or Friday that same week. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, Alex? Yeah, this is much more of a technical question that maybe goes to our town manager, but if we're posting about a meeting to comply with open meeting law, but that posting has to include an agenda for the meeting, correct? And if we don't have a chair for the subcommittee, who is allowed to author that agenda that then gets posted? I think I think the first agenda, Greg and Gaston could put, could work together to put it together, and you know, and then work from there. So, Thank you. so Gaston could call a meeting of a subcommittee. Would he have to be there personally? No. Okay. Maybe we should just decide the chairs tonight and and basically approve the working groups with chairs. Uh, if it, it, it's it's not unrealistic, but uh, let's uh, hear from Allegra, please. Well, I was going to say, would it make sense since we have these goals and strategies that we've put together in a plan to have that be the agenda for the first meeting so that we at least have something on the agenda? 
um, and perhaps like structure of working group subgroup as another agenda item, just so that things are somewhat consistent in our disorderly world <laughs> that I feel like we're entering into. Um, and perhaps recruitment strategies could be on that as well. Um, just something generic, but also like based in why we're breaking into these meetings in the first place. Alex, thank you. Yeah, I would agree with Allegra. I'd much prefer that as opposed to voting for the chairs of all the subcommittees tonight. Okay, so um, uh, is there a motion to uh, form the working groups as Shelley outlined their memberships? <laughs> I'm taking uh, Grover. I'm not moved. <laughs> so moved. Okay, yes. Second. Also, my child just told me they can see the Northern Lights, so I was sorry. I was having a very okay. <laughs> yeah. They're reaction. outside. Okay. I heard they're right now. Um, all right. So, uh, uh, Erica, how do you uh, vote on this motion? Yes. Okay, uh, Rob. Yes. Alex. Yes. Your your mic is doing that thing again, Allegra? Yes. Okay, Paul. Yes. Carol. Yes. And I vote yes, so we have working groups, yay. And uh, so to recap, when uh, I guess the members of the working groups, I suggest, uh, is there an open meeting issue with these uh, members communicating with each other by email? Not if, not if it's just for logistics, you can do okay. that. Okay, all and right, so- When are we gonna meet, where are we gonna meet, how are we gonna meet? That's okay, it. so I, I, I guess I, I propose that um, uh, these are not chairs, but may I suggest that uh, Erica, you email Rob with copy to Greg to uh, organize the logistics of the first meeting. Allegra, you uh, email Alex with copy to Greg. And I, I can do the same for uh, the, the development just to get the logistics moving and, and we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, uh, Shelly, what else do you see? So the only thing I wanna point out is that I think it's too premature to do a outreach strategy or recruitment strategy because we haven't finished flushing out the non-trust member piece. So I think you need to hold off on that until. What, 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 do, you, what do you not see flushed out? The small group is gonna flush out the non-trust members, what that looks like in this implementation strategy, right? Oh, okay, okay. I thought, we, I thought, I thought we'd ironed out all the kinks here. Uh, but maybe the small group can find some new kinks in the system. I, well, I think, I, more I think like so there's clarity. Guidance. It's just so okay. there's clarity about how okay. that's structured. So just, I think, hold off on your recruitment, um, doing any recruitment at this point. Okay, so the you know the only recruitment would be the notice of the meeting. Yeah. And the, 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 the may the heavens have someone show up. But I, I mean, I think you can talk to people about it, perhaps, but um, just just be cautious that the implementation plan hasn't been formally like accepted. Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Great job. Nice to see All everyone. Right. We're we're keep, yeah, keeping 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 good time. Um, if if there's nothing else, uh, anything else that wasn't uh, on the agenda and has come up in the last forty eight hours. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Allegra is seconding that. Okay. Um, uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye, aye, uh, thank aye, you, everybody. Aye. We're okay. meeting our time frames, which is excellent. Thank you so much, Greg, <laughs> for for leading the way. Of course. Thanks, Everyone go look at the sky. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shelly. Good night. Thanks, Shelly. Thanks.